Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. Today we are going to start our very first video on linear regression. Before we start that, I want to let you know that uh, sometimes people ask me who are just beginning in the field where to start with or also the people who want to excel in the field where to start with that. And my suggestion most of the time is start with linear regression. Let me explain why is that. Linear regression in machine learning is conceptually one of the most complete topics. And why I say, say that is that uh, it not, it's not only the part of machine learning, but it's it has its root in statistics, econometrics and many other fields. And uh, it has a loss function which has both analytical and numerical solution. What is that? We will see that. And also there are assumptions of linear regression and while we uh, go through the assumptions of linear regression, it talks about correlation, it talks about multicollinearity, it talks about normality, it talks about vari variance. So in a way it introduces so many concepts which are the fundamentals of machine learning. That's why I feel linear regression is the most important topic in machine learning and also it uh, linear regression is linear. So it also talks about what is linearity, what is non-linearity and half of the machine learning fundamentals gets covered when we uh, have a good understanding of linear regression. With that motivation and even I am excited to start this topic, let's begin our journey uh, uh, towards linear regression. Let's understand linear regression with a problem statement. Suppose a store owner wants to forecast his or her daily sales so they can plan their promotions or inventory stocking in a better way. And they figured out that the factors which will play a major role will be the promotions. That is whether there was discount or not, because if there is discount, more people swap. So whether there was promotions or not, whether it was a weekday or weekend and whether it was rainy weather or not. And also the rain can either be measured as rain or not, or it can also be measured in terms of depth. That is how heavy or light the rainfall was. If it was not a very heavy rainfall, then maybe the more people will go out. But if it's a very heavy rainfall, may, more people may not go out for shopping. So in that way, uh, in, in the first case, rainy weather is just a Boolean uh, variable that is 0 or 1. But in this case, it can be a continuous variable. So linear regression can take care of both type of variables. So we have seen a problem statement. We haven't gone to details of what is this B0, B1, B2, which we will. But as of now, from the problem statement, it's cl uh, clear that we are trying to forecast the sales. So linear regression is used in such type of problems where we have to predict a continuous value considering various factors or features like in this problem the features or factors are promotions weekend or rainy weather and it's also used extensively in forecasting of sales or units it's used in predicting house prices the price of a house will depend on how big is it in terms of area which is area in square feet and then locality in which locality is it the city and also the neighborhood how good the neighborhood is similarly it's used in calculating relationship between parameters in various biological and econometric system so what is the relationship so if you see this b0 b1 b2 this is the dependency of sales on this these variables so one unit increase in weekend will uh, change the sales by b2 unit right and b2 can be uh, positive or negative so this is the relationship this kind of relationship that as the week this variables uh, value changes how much is the change in uh, the dependent variable which is the sales and what is this dependent independent variables all those things we will see but one thing to uh, understand here is that it's we are calculating some kind of relationship next let's go more into depth of linear regression Linear regression is a linear model. Now, what does a linear relationship mean? If you see this plot between y and x, there is a linear relationship, right? As the x increases, y increases or decreases in a linear fashion. Here also, in the, in the first example, y increases as the x increases. And in the second example, y decreases as the x increases. So, uh, no matter increase or decrease, the relationship is linear. While in the third case, the relationship is non-linear. So, lin as the name suggests, linear regression is a linear model and it can only capture the linear relationships. And some terminologies, when there is a single input variable x, like, uh, like in this case, the variable is only one, right, x. 
in that case it's called a simple linear regression but in case the input variables are more than one it's called a multiple linear regression for example in this case there are promotion we can rainy weather three uh, variables so in that case it will be called as multiple linear regression and uses we have already seen of linear regression it's used in demand forecasting it can be used in trend analysis to find relationship between parameters it can also be used in prediction problems so it can be used in capacity planning how many resources will be needed and so on now with that understanding what a linear model is what is linear regression and also looking at a problem statement to understand in which kind of problems it's used let's go into much more depth that is the equation this is the model representation of linear regression where you can see that y is equal to beta naught beta 1x plus beta 2x2 and so on so all these x1 x2 up to xp are the features all the or the factors and uh, as i said in the very first introduction that linear regression has its uh, roots in statistics econometrics and many other fields that's why there are many terminologies used for this parameters so we will look at that first this y which is the thing that we are trying to predict is called response variable it's also called dependent variable dependent because it is dependent on x all the x right how much whether it was promotion or not whether it was weekend or not that will impact y that's why it's called dependent variable it is dependent and it's also called observation it's also called y variable while uh, let's look at the uh, right hand side beta naught is the interceptor bias if you uh, know the equation of line it's y equal to mx plus c right that c is the intercept is this beta naught in a problem statement beta naught can also be thought of, thought of impact on y when all the features are nullified in that way also beta naught can be understood so it's the intercept in this line you can see that when all when x is 0 the y is 5 right so that is this beta naught and what are the other x's which are the features or factors called they are called feature variable they are called predictors they are also called x variable they are called independent variable and they are also called explanatory variable now very important thing why are they called independent so it's assumed that all the factors are independent of each other that is promotions has nothing to do with weekend weekend has nothing to do with rainy weather or not so this is an important assumption it assumes that all the features are independent and the y variable is dependent on these independent features there may be some part for example in this you can see the line we fit a line but it's still there is some error which our model is not able to explain that is the random error or noise when there is only one x it's called simple linear regression in that case classifier or the model will, ju will just be a line and in case of multiple linear regression when we where we have multiple axes or that separating boundary will be a plane or hyperplane right because there are multiple features so it's a multidimensional with that now the next thing that comes definitely would be coming to mind is how to estimate the right values of these parameters which is beta naught beta one and so on right to calculate those coefficients we need to define the loss function right because those coefficients would be the ones which will minimize the loss function and what could be the loss as we have seen in this example there is a we are our model is a line but still it is making some errors because it's hard to fit each and every instance right so in that case the loss function used for regression is motivated by that error so the loss function is ordinary least to square where the goal is to find the hyperplane whether it could be a line or hyperplane that minimize the vertical offset which is the error between prediction and the target value so best fitting line best fitting line minimizes the sum of squared errors or mean squared errors between the target variable y and our predicted output so total sum of squared error will be equal to target minus output and we take a whole square of it and the error could be on the positive side or on the negative side and we always want to take a square of it so that it's always uh, positive we can also divide it by n which is the total number of instances and that will become mean square error which is the average of sum of square error now we have defined our loss function next thing will be to just find the right parameters which will minimize this loss 
these betas or these coefficients could be estimated using two type of solutions one is the analytical solution and another is the numerical solution analytical solution is it involves forming the problem in a well understood form and calculating the exact solution and in one go so uh, we will see how is that but one thing to remember is that the solution is found in one go while the numerical solutions makes guesses at the solution and test whether the problem is solved well enough to stop or not and this is done across multiple iterations so first of all we will look at analytical solution and to make it easier for you to understand let's go little back to our uh, 11th or 12th standard mathematics where we learned finding minima or maxima of a function so let's say this is a function you can see that this point is a minima this is a maxima this is a minima again and this is a maxima while uh, this one is local maxima this is the most highest maxima which is the global maxima similarly this is the local minima and this is the lowest minima which is the global minima and uh, these points are also called extremum points because one of the extreme end is reached here whether it's maxima or minima but one of them and similarly if you see another function y equal to x cube at this point this is called inflection point where uh, it's neither a maxima it's not a minima but the function changes its direction from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing or in some a literature you will find it a function becomes convex to concave or concave to convex so this kind of changes in the behavior of the functions happen that is a inflection point this is a reminder of uh, mathematics you might have already learned one thing to note is that at an extremum point the slope or the first derivative of the function is zero and to find whether it's a minima or maxima we used to do second derivative find all the axes where your first derivative is zero that is slope is zero that will be one of your extremum points and now we are find trying to find whether it's a minima or maxima using the second derivative test so take the second derivative at x such that x the first derivative was already zero and if the second derivative is less than zero then it's a local maxima if the second derivative is greater than zero then it's a local minima and if it's equal to zero the test fails and there are further steps in it but this was the process overall summarizing it quickly we take the first derivative equate it to zero those are the extremum points and then we use the second derivative to test to find whether it's a minima or maxima this is what we used to do similar thing can be done in linear regression uh, because it's found that the loss function for linear regression is a convex function which means a global minima exists so that is the close form or analytical solution of linear regression looking at the screen it may look bit intimidating but it is not just let's go with the flow and you will find that it's very simple it's the same thing that we did in the last slide we will do here as well so this is the hypothesis function which is our prediction theta naught x naught plus theta 1 x 1 up to theta n x and this is our prediction this is our predicted line given that x naught x 1 are our predictors that is features now we have already seen that uh, our loss function is uh, mean square error so this is our hypothesis minus the actual value squared and taking dividing by 1 by m we can also divide it by 2m because it's the same thing it's just um, divide if you have a loss function to minimize and you minimize whether that loss function or loss function by 2 is the same thing so this is done for mathematical simplicity now this way this is our mean squared error right till this point it's clear we have our hypothesis which is our prediction and y is our target now uh, the thing is to find the right coefficient which will minimize this loss function next is we will try to represent our hypothesis function in terms of vector format that is theta naught x naught theta 1 x 1 can also be represented as theta transpose x where theta will have all the theta naughts up to theta n and x will have all the x 1 x 2 up to x n so in the vector format or matrix multiplication this can be written as theta uh, transpose x right clear similarly the loss function can be written as x theta minus y transpose x theta minus y and why is that 
because in matrix multiplication x square can be written as x transpose x now we can open this parenthesis and rearrange the terms from mathematics if you recall and if you, if you don't let us quickly revise a b whole transpose becomes b transpose a transpose so this x theta transpose will become theta transpose x transpose and uh, this this will get multiplied by this also by this and this will get multiplied by this and also by this and after rearranging all the terms this is what you will get and uh, this is our cost function just after representing it in vector format and doing some rearrangements right uh, next what we need to do is what we have done in the previous slide as well take the derivative of it equate it to zero find the values of theta and it comes out that this is the global minima or the theta which will minimize the loss function so let's do that this is our law this is our loss function let's take a derivative of it derivative of uh, with respect to theta because that is what we want to find so there are two thetas theta transpose and theta so only one theta will remain and in this term there is only one theta so that will go away and in this term there is no theta so this will become constant this will become zero so because derivative of a constant is zero and in that way this will be equal to zero this term can go there and finally theta will equal to uh, if we multiply like if this is the equation then we can simply move this that side it will become inverse so these are all in vector format that is matrix format so it's a matrix inverse so finally theta is equal to x transpose x whole inverse x transpose y and this is your theta that will minimize the loss function now when to use this solution this solution should be used when you have smaller data sets because because finding the inverse of a matrix is a costly affair and sometimes the inverse doesn't exist right because we know that if determinant of that matrix is uh, uh, zero in that case the inverse may not exist that's why many packages also use pseudo inverse because it's more stable and yeah this is your analytical solution where theta is equal to x transpose x whole inverse x transpose y with that let's move to the numerical solution numerical solution as we uh, introduced in the beginning it's a solution where we make guesses and every time we uh, do some adjustment and it's a iterative process uh, in numerical solution the so, uh, approach which is used is gradient descent whenever uh, we have to minimize a function using this kind of iterative approach we use gradient descent and we have to maximize a function we use gradient ascent as the name suggests gradient which is the uh, slope dy by dx and descent means we move in the opposite direction of uh, gradient so that we minimize a loss function normally in english ascent means climbing up the hill and descent means climbing down the hill because we found the because we want to find the minima of this convex function we will have to come uh, down the hill which is we will have to do gradient descent and let's see how gradient descent is done from the last slide or last previous slides we know that this is our loss function where we try to minimize the difference between target and our predicted output at a time we do a partial derivative with respect to each theta the magnitude and the direction of the weight update is computed by taking a step in the opposite direction of cos gradient this is our gradient del j by del theta j and then we take a negative of it because we take a step in the opposite direction of cos gradient and we also multiply it by learning rate so every time i am now uh, do, doing some adjustment in, and after multiple iterations the solution will converge it will definitely converge because it's a convex loss function so that so this is our numerical solution and also we saw our analytical solution in the last slide the analytical solution it's finding it in one go but matrix uh, finding the inverse may sometimes be difficult costly affair or sometimes the matrix uh, inverse may not exist at all in that case we also use pseudo inverse or we can go to a numerical solution which is something like gradient descent this solution is really good if my data size is huge because I am not using all the data for the update at a time. I am doing a mini batch gradient descent. That is, I am taking a batch of instances, finding my gradients, uh, and then updating it. So I am not taking whole data at a time. But for the analytical solution, 
I will need the whole data at one time and if my data is huge which may not fit in memory, it is better to go with numerical solution. With that, now let us go back to our problem and now once we have learned so many things about linear regression, we have the tools and techniques to uh, understand the results more. This was our problem where the shopkeeper was trying to plan promotions and inventory stocking. He trained a linear regression model for, for one year of data using these binary predictors which are promotions, weekend and rainy, rainy weather and these are the results he got. B0 equal to 2000, B1 equal to 500, B2 equal to 250, B3 equal to minus 400. Let's try to understand these coefficients a bit first. So B0 is the average sales that no matter whether promotions is there or not, weekend there or not, rainy weather there or not, this is the bare minimum sales that will happen. And in case there is promotions, the sales will increase by 500 units. If there is a weekend, the sales will increase by 250 units. And if it is a rainy weather, the sale will decrease because many people will not come out for shopping because it is raining already and the sales will reduce by 400 units. It is a negative impact. Now let us try to make a prediction. Predict the sales on a Sunday with sunny weather and no promotions. So promotion, no promotion. So 0 into 500, there is no promotion. And weekend, it is a Sunday. So it is a weekend, 1 into 250 and sunny weather, so no rain, so 0 into minus 400. So if we do this calculation, we get 2 to 5 0. In this way, once we have learned the uh, parameters, we have learned the relationship, we can make predictions or forecasting. That is bring us to the end of this video. Few things I want to clarify. I kept this video short because I wanted to focus more on different terminologies used for linear regression. I wanted to give an idea about how important or conceptually complete linear regression is and also give an idea that there are many more things to it like the assumptions of linear regression that we will see in upcoming videos and uh, most importantly how a linear regression is solved that is both the numerical and analytical solutions. And one generic learning that might have already happened for you is understanding numerical and analytical solutions because these terms may uh, come across different topics. So you have an idea that what is an analytical solution, what is a numerical solution. And uh, in the next video, we will look at assumptions of linear regression, which is very important that what when you get these kind of results like in the last slide. Uh, can you be sure that your model is statistically significant or not? If the assumptions are satisfied, then yes, your model is. If not, then might be your model not. And we will look at variable importance and goodness of it. And then we will talk about the variation, variations of linear regression. Linear regression is used in econometrics, statistics and so many fields. So there have been many modifications around the algorithms that we will look at the variations of linear regression. And finally, we will do a practical session to test all our learning in a uh, data set. So with that, we come to an end of this video. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel so you can get the notification whenever the next video comes. You can comment to know, let me know your feedback, how you felt about this video and uh, stay tuned. Bye.